Good morning. It's great to have you in worship at St. John's this morning, whether you're in person or online. It's good to have you. So this week we are talking about the first of the five principles of the Red Letter Challenge, and this week is about being. And as I was thinking about it, there's a great Bible story that I feel really gets to the heart of being and being present with God. And that's between the sisters, Mary and Martha. So they are preparing because Jesus and all the disciples are coming. So they're making those preparations. I imagine them getting food ready. They're cleaning up the house. They're getting everything set. Martha is frantically running around doing all this. And where's Mary? Mary's at the feet of Jesus. Now Martha is not happy at this fact. So she calls Mary out on it. She goes to Jesus and says, Jesus, do you look at what my sisters? Come on, help me. And Jesus says this. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. See, Mary understood what it was like to be with Jesus. She wanted to hear his words, was hanging on every word that Jesus spoke. And that's what we hope as you go throughout this week, that you kind of get that idea. You remember that image of Mary and Martha and what Jesus says is better, and that is being with God. So, it is great to have you in worship here this morning. We're going to start with our opening hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Before we start, if you just want to wave and greet those around you with a greeting this morning. rise for our invocation. So all of us come into worship with different things, different things in our mind, maybe distractions, maybe we have a conflict or something going on that is filling some of our headspace. And it's important for us to come and really come into worship and be present. So this morning I just want to give you one moment of silence just to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds for worship this morning.
Now hear the words of our invocation. So we make our beginnings this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together to read together the call to worship from Psalm 62. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him. For God is our refuge. Now we join together to confess our sins. With humble hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Faithful Father, have mercy upon us. We have failed to obey your commands. Loving Savior, have mercy upon us. Wash us clean in your saving blood. Comforting Spirit, have mercy upon us. Restore us to be your own. Amen. In Isaiah 44, the Lord declares, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud. Your sins are like the morning mist. Therefore, believe this good news. For Jesus' sake, God forgives all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now have a special music from our bell choir, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
Thank you so much for that bell choir. Uh, we'll continue by next listening to our um, scripture reading from Hebrews 3. Our New Testament reading is from Hebrews chapters 3 and 4. Be careful, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believe, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. God's promise of entering his rest still stands, so we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news, that God has prepared this rest, has been announced to us just as it was to them, but it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, In my anger I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world, we know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, They will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there is a Sabbath rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading today is from Matthew 11, verses 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord you can please be seated. We'll have the video portion of our children's message. Mom, what are you doing? Hey. I'm reading my book. Can we sit by you? Yeah. And be with you? And be with you. I'm gonna sit with you. I want to. I want to. I want to. It's me. I want to. You guys can sit here. You guys sit there. No. Yes. Uh, what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? I'm just trying to go to the bathroom. <laughs> having some M&M's. 
Can I have some? How about just one? <laughs> okay. Can I have some? <laughs> Can I have all of them, please? Oh, oh yeah, I got these three. <laughs> All right, moms, show of hands, how many moms can relate with this scenario? No matter what happens, kids want to find mom. They want to be by mom. Dad can be standing right next to them. They will go around dad, and they will wind sprint to mom. There's just something about being with mom. Now, the illustration I want to share today is that we're talking about being with God. That really should be an image of the way we look for God. I mean, think about that. Like, kids always want to be with mom no matter what. Well, God is with us no matter what. Kids want to share in food, obviously, with mom. We should want to share in food with God. All those things, all those times we want to be with mom should be the same thing with God. We should be seeking God in that way. We should want to read our Bibles. We should want to sing those songs. We should want to be there with every point with God. I just thought this week, as we look about being, it seems so simple. How do we spend more time? How do we be with God? I think we have to look at some of those images on earth that we do. As kids, run to mom. We should all want to run to God. So let's put our hands together. Let's pray this morning and let's ask God to help us bring everything to him. Let's pray. Good morning, God. Please help all of us to run to you with everything. We know you always are there and hear us. In your name, we pray. Amen. We will continue worship now by singing our sermon hymn, Come Unto Me, Ye Weary.
Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to hear that invitation to come to you in our weariness and to find rest for our souls. May we find that as we come to your word today. In your name we pray. Amen. So a couple of weeks ago, I had what you can call one of those days, and maybe you can relate. One of those days where it's like you are on the go from sunup to sundown, where you have no opportunity to stop and sit and rest. See, a couple of weeks ago, Josh and I were going through his online orientation for his seminary training that he's starting. And so every day from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., we had online meetings. And some of you are familiar with Zoom fatigue. It's what happens in the midst of COVID where instead of being able to go into work, you now have all of these online meetings. And by the time you get to the end of the day, being in front of a screen, you're just exhausted and you want to go home and take a nap. And I couldn't do that because after I got done at 3.30, I had all the rest of my pastoral responsibilities to attend to for that week. And so that particular day, it was a 3.30 meeting with the organist to plan out all of the hymns for Lent and then grab a quick supper and come back for a finance meeting here at church that I thought was only going to take, you know those meetings. And by the time we were done, it was 9 o'clock and I still had to record my midweek video devotion and do all the editing of that. And of course, technology that day wasn't working for me. And so by the time I get home, it's about 10.30 and my to-do list still isn't done. And so it's hard for me to shut off my mind if I still have things that I need to do. And so I lay there in bed trying to fall asleep, eventually nodding off only to wake up too early the next morning to do it all over again because that's what happens. Sometimes one of those days turns into one of those weeks, turns into one of those months, and we fail to just stop and sit and rest. And that's what we're talking about this weekend in the Red Letter Challenge. We're talking about what it looks like to be in a relationship with Jesus. So I want to take a look at a story with you from Mark chapter 6. So here's what's happening in Mark chapter 6. Jesus is sending out his disciples on his behalf and they're going out and they're doing all kinds of great things. They're they're healing people and they're driving out demons and they're proclaiming the kingdom of God. All of these incredible things. And you get to verse 30, and and it says, The apostles gathered around Jesus, and they reported to him all they had done and taught. And I imagine this is kind of like when my wife leaves me home for the day, and she gives me the to-do list. And so I'm working hard to make sure that I can check everything off of the to-do list. And she shows up, and what do I do? I report to her everything that I have done, whether it's on the list or not, because Let's be honest, I'm looking for a little bit of affirmation here. I'm looking for her to say to me, you know what, honey, you are such an incredible husband. I don't know what I would do without you. I am so happy that I chose you. And this is what the disciples are looking for. They're looking for a little bit of affirmation from Jesus, a little bit of an attaboy. Way to go, guys. I am so happy to have you on Team Jesus. I don't know what I would do without you. And yet that's not what they get. Instead, if we continue reading, here's what we see. It says, because so many people were coming and going that they did not have a chance to eat. And you've had some of those days, right, where you're just on the go and you know that you don't even have time to take a break and you're scarfing down your lunch right there at your work desk. And Jesus said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place. And get some rest. Jesus says, just step away from everything that you're doing so that you can be with me. Because here's the truth as we look at the story. Sometimes our productivity for God can distract us from the presence of God. I mean, we want to be productive, right? We want to accomplish as much as we possibly can in the course of our day. We want to check as much as we can off of the to-do list. And I'm with you. You ever heard of the Enneagram? It's a personality test. And there are nine different personality types. Well, I'm an Enneagram 3, which means I'm an achiever. I'm the type of person who sets goals and is very driven to accomplish that. 
And not only do I want to accomplish those goals, but I have high standards for myself and for others around me. And sometimes that's a good thing. And sometimes it's not. Because there are times where I realize that my productivity for God, I'm doing all of these things for God, actually prevents me and distracts me from stopping to sit and be in the presence of God. This is what happens for the disciples. They're doing all of these incredible things. And Jesus says, just set those things aside and spend some time with me. Because here's what I'm continuing to learn. Following Jesus is far less about a religion of doing and far more about a relationship of being. In fact, this is the essence of the gospel. The gospel is about resting from our labors so that we can be with Jesus, knowing that he's the one who has already accomplished everything on our behalf. And sometimes we need to stop and be reminded of that. I am not the Savior. I don't have to accomplish everything. I just need to stop and sit and be with Jesus and receive from him. Not that there's anything wrong with doing Like, trust me, in the weeks ahead with the Red Letter Challenge, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for us to see things that Jesus calls us to do on his behalf. There's lots of action-oriented words in the Gospels. But our relationship with Jesus starts with us sitting and stopping so that we can be with him. And I'm continuing to learn this in my own life. Every year, I identify a word for the year, a word that's going to shape and determine the goals that I have for that year and, and help me to become the person that I believe God has called me to be, to mold my character a little bit more throughout that year. My word for 2021 is rest. Because let's be honest, 2020 was not a year of rest for me or for many of you. 2020 was a year of chaos. 2020 was a year of disruption. It was a year where we did everything that we could to keep church going in the midst of knowing that we had to do church differently and still finding ways to make sure that we move the ministry forward. I got to the end of 2020 and I realized I'm exhausted and I need to find rest. But I'm still struggling with that. I mean, here we are. We're still in a staffing transition, and there are more responsibilities that I feel like are still being placed upon me. And even when I sit down and I have my annual review and they tell me, Pastor, you need to rest. You guys have been a part of those annual reviews. After they tell you to rest, there's all of these things that they're telling you that you still need to be doing and improving at. And I get it. I want to be one of those people. It's just the challenge of my life. I struggle to rest. I struggle to stop and to sit and just to be. And maybe that's because I buy the lie that the more I do, the more productive I am. And I want to be productive. I want to accomplish even more. But when you look at the studies, they'll actually tell you exactly the opposite. The more that you try to do, actually the less productive you are. So there's a book that I'm reading right now by Daniel Pink, and the book is called When, and it looks at the science of perfect timing. And one of the chapters talks about sleeping and rest in our lives. And it recognizes that most human beings throughout the course of their day have three different parts to the day. They have their peak period, they have a trough period, and they have a recovery or a rebound period. And these are our energy levels. It starts out high and eventually it drops off. And yet, so often what we do is we don't acknowledge that we are going through that low period and we need to stop and sit and rest and we just keep pushing through and it actually decreases our level of productivity in our lives. So Pink talks about something called a nappuccino. He says, in the afternoon when you get to this low period, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2.30, you stop and you take a short nap. 
25 minutes. And before you do that, you take a little bit of caffeine. It takes about 25 minutes for the caffeine to set in, so you wake up from that nap, and you've got this renewed burst of energy. It's a nappuccino. But you know, what social scientists and Daniel Pink are discovering is nothing new. This is actually something that is built into the fabric of creation. See, when God creates the world, he creates us to do, but then he also creates us to be and to rest. That's why we call it the Sabbath on the seventh day. And the word Sabbath means to stop and to sit and to rest. And we need those opportunities where we heed the invitation of Jesus where he says, come away with me and get some rest. Or in Matthew 11, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. And here's the challenge. If we fail to do this, if we fail to stop and sit and be with Jesus, our busyness can actually lead to burnout. And unfortunately, I've seen this in the lives of others around me and in the lives of fellow men who are in ministry. Uh, there's a podcast that I listen to by a pastor in Canada. His name is Kerry Newhoff. It's the Kerry Newhoff Leadership Podcast. Yeah, very, very original, I know. But... Part of Kerry's story is that about 15 years ago, when he was in his late 30s as a pastor leading a growing, thriving church, he burned out. He reached his breaking point, and he had to step away from ministry for a year. And this is not lost on me as someone who is now in my late 30s pastoring a church that is growing and thriving in ministry in the midst of a pandemic. And I realize that if I don't heed those same warning signs in my life, if I don't build in those stop points, those Sabbath points, that I will begin to break down and it will have an effect. This is what happens when we find ourselves constantly busy. Eventually our productivity decreases and our work is subpar. Not to mention that it affects our relationships and those that we love the most and we come home to them and we're distracted and we're cranky with them. And if this continues, we get to the place where we burn out. And God doesn't want that for us, which is why Jesus says to his disciples, and he says to us, come away with me and get some rest. And so this is what you're being invited into this week with the Red Letter Challenge, to focus less on the busyness of your life and to focus more on what it looks like to be in a relationship with him. And I'll warn you, this is going to be a challenge for you because there's going to be some things that you're going to be asked to say yes to and you're going to say, how can I add that to my already busy booked schedule? And what I've discovered is when it comes to time management, when you say yes to something, you need to say no to something else. So there are going to be some things this week spiritual disciplines that he's going to ask you to take on. But as you do that, I want you to be mindful of some of those things in your life that you may need to say no to. You might need to say no to Netflix. You might need to say no to social media and scrolling the web. You might need to say no to all of these extra kids' activities. You might even have to say no to some commitments at church because you realize that that productivity is actually causing you to miss the presence of God in your life. So in your readings this week, he's going to talk about some different spiritual disciplines Ways that we can learn to be with Jesus more, to be aware of his presence in our lives. And I just want to mention a few of them for you this morning. The first one is actually where you are right now. You go to church. Church becomes a non-negotiable for you. Now, unfortunately, we live in a culture where church is something that if it fits in the schedule then we make it work. But if there's something else that comes up on the calendar, if there's another activity that one of the kids has, or if we're away on vacation, we don't prioritize church. I want to invite you to make church your non-negotiable because it's at church that you receive. It's at church that you receive God's gifts. It's at church that you hear that word and you're able to receive his sacrament. You're able to receive forgiveness. You're able to receive direction in life. And you're able to come to this place 
where everything is put in their proper perspective and you realize that you're not the one who needs to be in control, that God is. You don't have to work your butt off because Jesus has already done the work on the cross for you. So you come to church because it's at church that you're reminded of those things. The second spiritual discipline or activity is you read your Bible because this is where we hear from God. And this is why we're doing the Red Letter Challenge. It's a reset point for us. It's an opportunity. If you haven't had that regular habit of reading God's Word, that you carve out that time every day to do the daily reading and to hear some of those words from Jesus. Third thing that you do is you pray. Prayer is just talking out what's going on in your life with God. And I don't want to overcomplicate it with you. Like, where do I start? How do I pray? If you don't have a regular prayer life, prayer comes down to three simple words. Please, thank you, and sorry. This would be the way that I'd invite you to look at your prayer life with God. Look back at your life and your day and say, thank you for what God has given to you. And say, I'm sorry for areas where you've blown it. And then look at your life and the next day And say, please, where you need help and direction and guidance from him. So, you go to church, you read your Bible, you pray. The next thing you do is you listen to worship music. Now, I don't know what your go-to radio station is. Maybe you're a 92KQ, maybe you're a 93X, maybe you're a Cities 97, maybe you're a 101.3 KDWB, maybe you're a Cool 108, maybe you're an AM listener and you listen to KFAN or you listen to local radio, KGLB. I don't know what your go-to radio station is on the dial in your car or in your kitchen. Maybe it's listening to country music, maybe it's listening to rap, maybe it's listening to pop, maybe it's listening to oldies, maybe it's listening to rock. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with whatever type of music you listen to, but I I am giving a word of caution that maybe if you listen to the lyrics of some of these songs, it's not leading you closer to a relationship with Jesus. And maybe some of the words are questionable, and you do have to reconsider some of your choices of the music that you listen to. But here's what I would invite you into in the week ahead, is consider finding a way to redeem some of your day, some of that time, whether it's that car time or that kitchen time, to listen to Christian music, to listen to worship music. Maybe that's turning to 98.5 KTIS. That's a local Christian radio station. Maybe you've got Pandora at your house and you're turning that on and you're searching for worship music. But find that way to carry worship over from the hour that you have on Sunday morning into your everyday life. The final spiritual discipline then is you take a Sabbath. We talked about this earlier. Sabbath is that seventh day of the week. It's that day where you stop and you sit and you rest and you set aside the to-do list and you set aside all of those distractions and the technology and you set your phone to do not disturb and you focus on those people that are around you and the place where God has put you and you take a walk and you spend that time in his word and in prayer and it's a little less structured and it's a little bit more about just being with him. You know, earlier I talked about one of those days, one of those days that's just booked from beginning to end. A Sabbath, what would it look like? What would one of those days look like for you? If you could design a Sabbath to set aside those distractions, to find that time that works for you, it's a challenge. But my invitation this week is to consider what does that look like in your life? As we close, I want to point out the Keurig machine that I have in front of me. Because in our kitchen, we have a Keurig. And I love the Keurig because you can take these little K-cups and whether your go-to drink is coffee or cappuccino or chai, you can take it, you can pop it in there, push it down, press the button, and within a matter of seconds, you have a fresh brewed hot cup of whatever your go-to drink is. And so often, I go to the Keurig in our kitchen And I do that, and I expect that I'm going to have that drink waiting for me. But periodically, that's not what happens. Periodically, there's a blue light that flashes at me and says, please refill. 
Do we do the same thing in our lives? Do we go about our days seeking to be productive for God and we're just pouring out and we're giving and giving and giving and always on the go and fail to realize that periodically we need to stop and we need to let God fill us? Because our doing always flows from our being and unless our tank is full, we will have nothing to give. So this week, May you learn to be with Jesus. And in that, may you find rest. Amen. Let's stand as we continue our worship by joining together and confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in We take this time to go to our Lord with prayers. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, your response will be, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, this week as we go throughout the Red Letter Challenge and we challenge ourselves to spend more time to be with you, God, help us to focus. Help us to look at those aspects of our life, those different disciplines, whether that's worship or prayer or music, just Help us, God, to focus on you. Help us to block out a lot of the distractions, a lot of the noise, a lot of the things that prevent us from really listening and being present, God. Help us to be like Mary. Help us to be at your feet and listening, to be in your word, and just to remind us, God, that you are with us, that you love us dearly. Lord, in your mercy. And God, this week we ask you to be with all those people who are sick, who are suffering, who need your extra help. This morning we pray for Beth Pawlik, Mary Richter, Cliff Bennett, Aubrey, the granddaughter, granddaughter of Coralie Frank, Mary Lou Rogie, Phyllis Livingston, Sarah Ojard, Phyllis Stender, Gino Patrini, and Jason Vinkemeyer and his fiancée, Caitlin. God, you know each of their needs. You know what's wrong with them. You know what type of healing that each of these people need, God. The one thing they also need is your, just the reminder of your presence, that you are with them. So be, please be close with them this week and bring them the healing that they need. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we also give thanks. We rejoice in the healing for Elaine Peon, who's back home and being able to recover after her fall. Just continue to bless her with that healing. Lord, in your mercy. And God, also be with those who grieve. This week we ask you to be with the family of Ken Melkert, who's the nephew of Orville Bachman, who passed away. Just wrap them, God, in your comfort and in your love and just in the Sure reminder, God, that anyone who believes in you does receive eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, God, we rejoice and we share together in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You can please be seated. At this time, we would like all those 
first-time drivers. And if you've got your driver's license in the last year, if you could come forward along with your parents or grandparent, whoever is here with you. So please come forward so we can give you a little gift and share a prayer blessing with you. All right, so as part of St. John's Milestone Ministry, one of the big things is we really want to partner with families going through significant life events. And one of those events is driving. Driving is a big deal. It opens really the world to possibility in all the different places you can go. But with it also comes a little bit of fear, a little bit of worry. See, in Scripture, God says the phrase, fear not or do not fear, 365 times. I think it's one of those things that he could be speaking directly to parents as it relates with kids. Because once they get those car keys, there is always that worry. Did they get where they're going? Did they show up? Did they text when they got there? Did they not look at their phone while they were driving? Did they, did they, did they? We worry. That's natural. As a parent, we care, we love, we don't want anything to happen to our children. So that's why we really want to spend just a moment just highlighting this to say a prayer of blessing just to ask for God's comfort and his presence. So each of the kids received just a little visor, and on that visor is just a little reminder that they put in their car that wherever they go, God goes with them. Now, I wish I could say after a year, we did this one year ago, that the visors were fine, nothing bad happened to any kids who were driving. Well, we had a rollover, we had a car totaled, we had a lot of different things that happened to kids in that year. Now, the cars didn't look great, but thankfully, they were okay. So that's our prayer for you. So let's join together. Let's say a prayer of blessing, not just for these kids, but also for their parents. Let's pray. God, we know that there's such a blessing uh, in our country, especially to driving, to being able to take those keys and go somewhere and to get where you want to be. But with that also, God, comes a level of responsibility. There is responsibility in driving. We ask that you be with these kids. Be with these new drivers. Help them to look at that visor, the clip on their visor, and remind them, God, that you are with them. But also help remind them to slow down when the roads are bad. Help them to leave their cell phones in their cup holder, not looking at it while they are driving. Help them to not be distracted and to be with them and keep them safe wherever they go. Also, God, be with their parents. Uh, These parents care about them. They want them to be safe, but they also worry. Be with them in those nights where they're worried if their kid has made it to their certain friend's house or the roads are a little bit slippery in a morning ride to school. Remind those parents that you are with their children wherever they go and you are there to protect them. Just please wrap all these kids, all the new drivers in our community and area with your blessing, with your comfort, God, and with your protection. It's all in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Blessings out on the road. Uh, As they return to their seats, uh, the overall blessing just to give to everybody. So this week we focus on the being portion of the Red Letter Challenge. So uh, some scripture from John 14, some of those red letters that Jesus gave us. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching." My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. God comes to us. So please remember that this week. Amen. We now stand, we rise, please, to sing our closing hymn, Thine Forever, God of Love.